Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something pretty cool I would say and uh, that is uh, the Advantage R6142 and that is a programmable DC voltage and current generator. And I actually ran into this one when I was looking for new multimeters or new, I'm browsing always the eBay or my local uh, marketplace where I'm looking for, for multimeters. And, and a lot of time, if you uh, look at those pictures, because the seller is of course trying to promote the meter and showing that it is really good. And then a lot of time you find on eBay that people have this advantage. And um, then I started looking for it and I didn't find one or they were very expensive. But now lately, um, yeah, they just turn up on our local eBay. So uh, I was lucky. There was a seller who actually had three of them. Uh, turned out he was also uh, a viewer of my channel and I was able to, to pick one. So it is here. And well, I found already little tricks in the manual how to how to use it. And you can set voltages and currents in, in different way. It's only for DC voltage and DC current. It is a bit of a limited of a model because it can only go up to 12 volts. And I think 120 milliamps. And here it is uh, close by. And it's actually pretty easy to operate. You can just use the arrows up and down. But if you can see in the green, maybe if I zoom in a bit more, it also has green numbers here. And then you can actually use the data input. But controlling it with the buttons is, is already pretty nice. Uh, but if I say I want 10, let's say 11, I do data, I do one, one point. Zero, zero. You need to complete all the digits and then you say I want volts or millivolts. Well, let's do millivolts. And now the setting is also accepted. If you do lazy typing, like you say, okay, I want 11 millivolts, it doesn't accept that. So you need to really finish all the digits. So uh, if I want 12 point, finish all the digits. Well, 12 doesn't exist because it only goes to, okay, so 11.000 millivolts accepted. What you can also do, and it is automatic stepping, which is also great. Um, if I say, okay, up one, up one, that's good. But if I hold, it starts stepping automatically. And that speed, you, you can just stop it by clicking again. But the step you can set here, if it wants to do every second one step, or I say no, do every 0.2 seconds a step, then it will go a little bit faster. Did it record it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now it will go a lot faster. If you want it slower, you can say, okay, I want every, and it types a little weird, every two seconds step. Then, here it goes. So that are most of the tricks. And if you want, well, you can do amps or volts or millivolts. And it can go pretty low actually. It starts here from a microvolt and it can go all the way up. But then it stops at 11 and I think it is 999. This is, and then it goes to the next uh, range. So if you want above 12, you need to change your range and then it is just. Uh, Like this, just like a multimeter, when it switches a range, you almost miss a digit. Well, same happens here. Okay, that seems very uh, easy and straightforward to, to operate. Um, let's see if it's any good. 
Okay, I've set it up to 100 millivolts. You can see the sick land here in the back. It's already on for a while. If, if it, the temperature in my lab is not that, not that constant. So sometimes it just goes a little bit too low because it's very sensitive to temperature. And this one is usually after 15 minutes, it is uh, spot on and then it stays where it is. So I would expect that the sick land is maybe a little bit low. If I set it to operate, uh, well, it's actually good. And what about, yeah, well, we kind of agree even. So it turns out it is a little bit high. So that's in the millivolts. Can I do a 110? Yeah, 90. It is a bit high on all these levels, but calibrating is also not that complicated. Pretty straightforward. And this one was actually calibrated when I bought it. It's maybe a little bit more than a year ago. And this one was just almost new when I got it. And but they also agree. So uh, if I go to voltage, this is 200 millis. Here it didn't switch over. But they still agree. Let's do a bit more. One volt. They still agree and it's still a fraction high. But it's uh, pretty easy to operate. And yeah, the level is, uh, the limit is about uh, 12 volts right now. Almost 12. This one even thinks it's Oh, I can do, yeah. What about uh, milliamps? Let's see, one milliamp. We need to switch it over to DC. Okay. Um, first connect. Oh, bright. Do we have one milliamp? Look at that one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, and sometimes a zero. That seems pretty spot on. What does the cyclone think? The cyclone also thinks, look at this. And a little bit more. Can I do a range here? 10 milliamps. Yes, one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros. Look at that. Ten, zero, zero, zero. Ooh, yeah, one hundred. One hundred. Yeah, one twenty is the maximum, or almost one twenty. And Look at that. So that seems to be good. It's responding. The values are almost almost good. Maybe we can improve that by, by calibrating. We need to go to the procedure. But first I want to do a little upgrade because I found on the EEV block that there are people that just, you just need to close three jumpers the JP1, JP2, and JP11. And if you do that, you tell the device that it is actually a better version, and then it becomes the R6144. And instead of going up to 12 volts, it can go up to 30 volts. And also, the current goes from 120 milliamps, it can go to 160. So that's pretty cool to do, do a free update. So we're going to do that. If you're looking for one of these second hand, there are also versions that is not the R, but it is the TR version. And the TR is actually an older model. And that one, the T stands for a Takeda. Takeda Riken. 
that's the brand before it was called Advantage. And in that older version, that has a, they use little pots to do the calibration, while this newer version here, I think the specifications are more or less the same. This one is done electronically, and we will go to the procedure if I can find it, because I like to have it spot on, but it was not bad at all. And nowadays, the Advantage has even a different name. If you look for the manual, you find them for Advantage, but you also find them for the ADC MT, what they are called now. So we have seen that it works. So let's try to do the upgrade. And if I break it, at least we saw that it was working. It is quite big. And it is from Japan, actually. And well, here we have, but it, you can just set it to 100, 120, 230, 240 volts. So that is correct. And the calibration switch here in the back. It is just, it's normal plug. I think it's two screws to open. So uh, let's get to it. Yeah, and the seller was actually also uh, a viewer of my channel. And uh, he gave me the original Japanese, and it's still called Advantage here, the Japanese manual. It is, uh, well, it's all in Japanese, but it does have some pictures and great drawings. And of course, I digitally also the, the manual, but it is just very cool to have. So thank you, uh, Carol, for this. So of course we are interested to have a look inside, but uh, I'm more interested in the in the upgrade. And uh, well, I found it on the EEV blog, but also uh, if you want to see, like to see another video, um, it is from Jared from Nearfar Media, and uh, he is a specialist in Tektronic and also in these devices. So. Um, I got it from there. So let's open it. It is a little bit dusty inside. Okay, this is what the top looks like. This is the processor board. And well, the EEPROM is here. I think it holds the firmware. I think it was 0204 that this one is running. And, well, we need to find the jumper. The battery is here that holds the memory for the calibration. These are very famous for uh, going empty and leaking. But the battery doesn't look like it will leak because it actually looks very good. It needs to be 3.6 volts, it says. So how much do we have? 3.7 almost. So that seems that it is probably already replaced. Yeah, I can see some solder right there. So thank you for that. Let's see the startup for the before. It is the R6142 firmware version 204. So there is one jumper on the top to tell the board what version it is, what we saw in the display. And that jumper is located just right here. So it's the, between the second and the third IC. I try to zoom a little bit. And we have two jumpers here. One is on the voltage and one is on the current to uh, take out the limitation. So here is one. And here is one. So we start in the top. Let me try to zoom in on that. So it is on that second and third right here. And it is just a little bridge that is cut. So we just need to bend it back and then uh, we can solder it. Get those two together.
let it down go over to the other side and then we need to be here and here we solder the bridges let's switch it on yeah it thinks it's a 6144 cool firmware and it says well can it go higher now yeah we can break the barrier does it go to 160 yes it does pretty cool 160 milliamps and if we go to voltage does it go now higher range 16 16 volts I thought it would go higher do we have another voltage no oh yeah here we go 32 volts okay that was pretty cool up to 32 volts and now you also have all the zeros instead of the 99999 I like that better and um, well let's see if the failures are still good okay connected both the voltage meters 32 volt let's have a look no it is a little bit low so we might need to calibrate that it is even very low if we go to 30 volts yeah now it's completely off 20 volts no. we need to calibrate that again DC current milliamps one milliamp upright yeah the milliamp is still one milliamp same here yes that is still good let's go higher 1.6 yes spot a spot on uh, range we can go higher one sixty is the highest well look at that that is very near to one sixty so the current is still good well the voltage needs to be recalibrated okay the calibration we just have it switched on and then there is this little switch and the big switch in the back the big switch you click then you do step and then milliamp or millivolts so I do milliamps now I put it in operate and now I'm doing the zero and the zero here is almost zero and we can try to adjust that with these buttons little steps medium steps or big steps so I want to change that it is exactly zero no I think this would be the best then we go to the next step we click the range button now I need 1.6 and we need to adjust here so I need to go up a lot more up almost there I would say this is 1.6 yes we go to the next zero again seven or minus two then minus two is closer range I need to do 16 a little bit up spot 
built on. Next one. Yeah, we also need to do this arrow. Oh, it goes with big steps. Twenty two or plus seventy or minus twenty two. Okay, then it's this range. Then we do the one sixty, that was almost there. Okay, we've done the settings step, and now it should be stored. So if I go now to milliamps, then yeah, it is, but it is a little bit off. But it is here zero zero, and here it is zero zero six. And if I go to 20, 100, it's still a little bit off. How come? Oh, here it is good. So let's try the same with the milli faults then. Once you know how this is done, it is also not very complicated. You just need to try to, to match what you want on the screen. Just with the buttons up and down. And it wasn't necessarily that clear in the manual. But uh, that's why you can just follow this now. Um, yeah, now we only need to clean it. Okay, I noticed that uh, after calibrating the linearity was not that good and it still bothered me. So after I was done with cleaning, I thought, okay, I'm touching this one pot that everyone says not to touch. And that is, there is only one. It is here on the bottom and um, right there. It's the only one, hard to miss. So sorry, I don't zoom in, but hard to miss. Not hard to miss, I mean. So. What I did, uh, after I calibrated, I put it again to 32 volts. Then, uh, so the zero was calibrated, the 16 was calibrated, and the 32 was calibrated. Then I noticed that the 10 volts and the 20 volts were not good after I was done calibrating. So it was good on 32. Then I put it back to 16 volts, and I noticed it was 1602 or something. Then I turn the pot until the 16 was good. Then I check again, is the 32 was good, the 32 was good. Okay, then I did again the whole calibration procedure. And now, if I'm now on 10 volts, look at this, 9.9999. And if I go to 20 volts, 20.9999. And if I go to 30 volts, 29.999, 32 volts, 31.999, I would say that is pretty, pretty close. So you can touch that pot, but you need to be very careful and recalibrate again. So pretty cool current voltage generator. Uh, we were able to upgrade it to the 6144, thanks to uh, Jared of N uh, Near Far Media, and also the documentation on the EEV blog. And I was also able to calibrate it, and it is now spot and spot on, and also it looks great. I will show you some pictures uh, in the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you next time.